Greetings and welcome to the next lesson in the Ethereum technology course. In this unit, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most integral aspects of Ethereum technology, and that is the smart contract. What exactly are smart contracts? How do they work? And how can we build one? We're going to take a look at this in this lesson. Now, in Ethereum, there are essentially two different types of accounts. There are externally owned accounts, which are similar to our traditional Bitcoin wallets, which are capable of sending and receiving payment. These externally accounts are controlled via a private key and they are controlled by the user. There are also, in addition, contract code accounts, which describe the actual smart contract of the network. Now, these contract code accounts are initiated when a transaction or a message is sent to them from an externally owned account. This is the manner in which a smart contract is initiated by the user when it receives a message from the externally owned account. Now, this message or this transaction from the externally owned account will usually contain four fields that help to construct the smart contract. The first field is the nonce, which is a cryptographic verification of the smart contract. It's an embedded verifiable data that is included in the blockchain so that we can look with certainty that a smart contract has been recognized and has been executed. That is the performance of the nonce of a contract. In addition, there's also the balance. And these smart contracts will not execute unless they have fuel or gas associated with their balance. It's worth noting that if a smart contract balance runs to zero, then it will no longer be executed and will actually be reverted to a previous state. Thirdly, there is the code itself of the smart contract. And this is the code that is compiled in order to be read by the Ethereum virtual machine, the smart contract itself, and the logic necessary to perform whatever function it is that the developer has specified. Finally, there is a optional field for data storage. And depending on what type of contract you're creating, this optional data field is an arbitrary array of any length of data that can be sent and stored alongside the smart contract. Now, it's worth noting that this data storage, because it can be any length, comes at a higher cost if the data set is larger. And in particular, for every additional 68 bytes of data, it's going to cost you one additional unit of gas per computational step of the smart contract. Now, two very important values that you're going to be hearing more frequently when we discuss smart contracting systems are start gas and gas price. Start gas describes the maximum number of computational steps a contract is allowed to perform. Gas price, on the other hand, will designate the price per computational step that the contract is willing to spend. These two values, start gas, and gas price are essential when you're constructing your smart contract. Now let's take an example here and say that we are looking to implement a domain naming system, a decentralized domain naming system such as Namecoin. How would we put that into a smart contract? Looking at the four fields, while our nonce takes care of itself, our balance will have to designate these two values, start gas and gas price, to ensure 
that as long as we want this contract to be functional, that we want a balance to be associated with our contract. Thirdly, we're going to have to compile the code or put the code into the contract itself in order to designate it as a domain naming system. And finally, we're going to have to include optionally data storage that would specify the IP address towards the URL. The connection there between the IP address and the URL would go into our data storage. So this gives us a brief overview of what a smart contracting system might look like on the Ethereum virtual machine. And it's important that we understand that this smart contracting functionality is the cornerstone of what makes Ethereum so interesting. The gas price and the start grass are required values that help us determine how much cryptocurrency we're associating with the contract and how much we're paying per computational step. We're going to be discussing smart contracting systems later on in the course. So for now, it's important that we understand the basics of how this works. That does it for this lesson. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next unit.